Hey, Clonebot Zach here, and today we're going to talk about special effects. So let me just go ahead and throw a little scene together, throw in a terrain, throw in a skyline real quick, and now let's click on Particle. Alright, so we have several different types of particles. You can just click on one, and then press play and watch how you add rain into your scene, like this. But what if you want snow? Not a problem. Just make a scene real quick. Let me grab a terrain. Here we go. Snowland. Let's make a sky. What kind of sky should we have? Hmm. Let's go with a dark sky. There we go. And then we can go back to particle and we can throw in some, say, snowflakes. Here we go. Alright. And you can always look for the particle that you have down there on the left in the scene manager. Okay, here we go. Press play. And it's snowing. But say, for instance, we don't like white snowflakes. We want our snowflakes to be red. So we can change the opacity and the start color. And there you go. Now you have some red snowflakes. But maybe that's not enough snowflakes. So let's scroll down here, find our quota. Where is it? Ah, here we go. Add in a few zeros here and there, and let's see what happens. Ah, madness. We have tons and tons of snowflakes now. But they seem to be falling a little slow, so let's go down a little bit further and take a look at force, and we can add in gravity and a little bit of wind and watch with the mayhem. Oh, look at all that snow flying everywhere. It's a blizzard of red snowflakes. Okay, another thing you can do is you can add in a few extra particles, such as like Hellfire, and we can dance in the flames. Pretty cool, right? So, what if you don't like the color of it? Not a problem. You can change the color, as well as the opacity for the flame, and make it look a little bit more gentler. Here we go. So it's not so traumatic fire, now it's just a little light fire. You can also do this with torch fire. See the torch fire at our feet? Alright. We don't like that color, so let's change that to red as well. And press play. Now here's another really cool thing about iClone. You can actually take particles and link it to the characters. And you can say you want to link it to her hand. And notice, now when she dances, the red flame is linked to her left hand. So let's throw another one in. Let's change the color to hmm, green. All right, and we'll link it to her other hand. And let's have her dance. All right, here we go. That's pretty cool, right? <laughs> She has magical green and red hands dancing in the flames. Wow. So feel free to do anything you want with your particles. Alright, so another quick thing I want to show you is the material that we can use for our 3D boxes. So for instance, we throw in this 3D box and notice you have the fuse opacity reflection. Well, let's take a look at diffuse real quick and throw in a quick diffuse JPEG. Let's throw this one on. But oh, that doesn't look right. The UV is not is not straight. So going down to the UV settings, we can change it to box, hit apply, and there you go. Now the texture is applied properly. Okay, that's the fuse. So let's take a look now at opacity. So let's click on opacity, open the folder, and you can find a few opacities here. That looks like a good one. So let's throw that in. And now you can see it's a little bit more uh, has a little bit more um excuse me less opacity. All right, so we can also throw in a few glows. We can throw in a reflection. There's a good reflection. Throw that one in. All right. And remember, you can always change the strength. Say, for instance, this glow, I want it to glow really bright or not so much. You can do the same thing with any of them, like opacity or reflection. Change the opacity to less. Let's see? Right. Okay, so in iClone 3, there are many different types of materials, many different types of diffuses, opacities you can use. So you can create just about any kind of object you want. Okay, so let's load another scene real quick. And uh, let me throw in a sky. Where's a good sky? All right, there we go. Okay, and let's now take a look again at props. Throw another one in. And I want to show you something called reflection and refraction. Okay, so let's get a little better look here. All right, make sure you have your box selected. Let's scroll down. Where is it? Let me find it. Ah, there it is. All right, so let's click this box here. And notice what happens. You can see a little bit. Can you see it? That's right, it's refracting light. You can see through the box, you can see what's behind it, but it has that little bit of a haze to it. So it's as if you're looking through an ice cube or something. And you can adjust it with the slide bar to make it more powerful or less. All right, let's turn that off and let's take a look at reflection now. All right, so now you can see reflection in the box. You can see the bridge that's behind us. All right. So you can do this with any of your props, any with any of the objects that you have in there. You can also do this with your avatar. Take a look at some of the avatar about the characters and whatnot, and you can see how we can do this with, with the face maps and whatnot. Alright, now I want to show you another thing. You can add in another bump map. 
and still using the reflection and refraction. Let's make sure it fits on it with the UV set. Make sure it fits on there, right? Okay. Now see how the bump map and the reflection and refraction work together. It's pretty cool. All right. Another thing I want to show you are, is something called flying surfaces. Now this is really cool. So you just throw one into your scene like this. Yeah, let me get a better view for it. Change it around. Okay. All right. Here we go. And let me pl press play, and you can see what happens. Notice now as the, as the timeline moves along, you can see there's certain effects being played out on this tech, on this, excuse me, on this object. It's blowing in the wind, right? So let's open up the, the flying settings, the flex settings, excuse me, the flex, and we can change the settings here. So we can make it a little, a little bit, uh, excuse me, have a, the strength of the flex a little bit stronger, or you can make it a little weaker, like so. And also change this parameter, there you go. So you can always just change the parameters around, just experiment to see what you like, see what works for you. Okay. Now we can also change the gravity, change this a little stronger or a little less, and you can see how now it's a little stronger. And you can also do the same with wind. But one of the main things that's really cool is changing the frequency and the strength to show you that you can have hurricane force winds or typhoon force winds, tornado force winds. And with this, you can easily create any kind of flag or other flying surface, flex surface, in your in any of your projects. For instance, maybe you could create a clothesline with clothes blowing slightly in the wind. Okay, so here's my guy. He's walking up to the door and he opens the door, but no sound effect. That's right. So let's throw in a sound effect. So we need to go up here to music. And here in music, you have several different options like music or sound effects. Let's just stick with the sound effect. And let's play through the timeline until we find the moment where he actually opens the door, which I guess is right about here. Okay, so let's import a sound. Let me find my sound. There it is. And just bring it in real quick. All right, now let's play it back and watch what happens. Ooh, the door is creaky and scary. All right, you can also do this with music and other sound effects. Notice this scene. The man gets into a car and drives away. It's quite boring without any sound effects, right? So I'm going to add in a few sound effects and maybe even a little bit of music. All right, so let's see here. We need to get into the music. And we need to find the right moment where he's getting into the car, which is right about here. And we open up the sound effect. Import one in. Let's found it. All right, there it is. Load it in. Okay, move along the, the, the timeline until we get to the point where he turns on the car, which I guess is right about there. Import the sound effect. Where is it? There it is. All right. And then let's also throw in some music to make it a little bit more interesting. We'll import one in. There you go. All right, now let's watch what happens. Alright, feel free to experiment with all the special effects to make your project just perfect. 